House of Wine and Cheese, and we sure can't forget about my online companies, 4winelovers.com, that's F-O-R, winelovers.com, and Epic, E-P-I-C, Cellar, C-E-L-L-A-R-S.com. Today I want to talk about planning a wine trip, and specifically we're going to talk about if you go to Napa and Sonoma Valley. I've been uh, to Napa and Sonoma close to 50 times, so I'm pretty well versed on the type of things you need to do and the things you need to think about prior to going, the concerns you should have, and, and how you can make a few plans ahead of time to, to ensure you're going to have a wonderful trip. First off, you know, you fly into San Francisco. Much better to fly into San Francisco than to fly into Oakland. Um, San Francisco, you can drive through, through the town of San Francisco. Sometimes I'll, I'll spend a night in San Francisco either on the way there or on the way back, depending on, on the flights and how they how they uh, they time out. But you're about an hour and a half from uh, the southernmost part of Napa and Sonoma. And um, if you're driving through traffic, it's going to take longer because San Francisco, you actually have to get off the freeway and then you hook back up on the freeway when you're getting on the Golden Gate Bridge. It takes a little while when you go through downtown San Francisco in traffic. Up in Napa, you should think about the type of hotel you want to stay at. There's all different types from, from high-end like Meadowood and Aubergine du Soleil, which can be 500 plus a night, all the way down to some bed and breakfasts. And there's, you know, there's uh, some of the, the national chains have, have hotels in, in the town of Napa. Frankly, you don't spend a lot of time in the room when you're in Napa Valley. You're out, you're out at the wineries. You're probably going to be at, at, at dinners. So make that a consideration when you're planning your trip. Um, the, the Napa itself is about 40 miles long, and it takes, uh, it takes travel time 45 to 50 minutes from the southernmost part to the northernmost part. So the next thing I want to talk about is when you're planning the wineries and where you're going to go. Um, first time I went, I tried to, pl to, to plan two, two tours in the morning and two tours in the afternoon too much. My suggestion to you is plan one, maybe two plan, uh, tours a day, official tours. Because what happens is you, you plan a tour. Let's say you plan a tour in the morning down in southern Napa. Say you go to Hess Collection, which is up in the Napa foothills. And um, you get out of there, and all of a sudden you run across, and you're driving, and you go, God, I want to stop at this winery. I wanna, you, you, if, you've got, if, you've got, if you're rushing to another tour, you're going to miss out on a lot, of, a lot of opportunities at other wineries that you recognize the names. And if you just walk into the tasting room, sometimes you have an unbelievable time because they, you know, the people in the tasting rooms are very knowledgeable, and, they're, and they're, they're, uh, they'll pour you lots of nice wines, and, and they're there to try and sell you wines, frankly. But you'll learn a lot about the wineries you're interested in. Uh, let's talk a little bit about restaurants. There's all kinds of restaurants in Napa Valley. Um, some of my favorites, uh, uh, lunch, I love to go mustards. Um, I don't really like it as much for dinner. I think it's a great location for, uh, for lunch. Trevina is another place that's been around forever in St. Helena. Um, great outdoor patio. You can do the outdoor patio for lunch or dinner. My preference is for lunch. Um, High-end French Laundry, considered one of the best restaurants in the world. Um, if you're staying at one of those high-end hotels, the uh, concierge can help you get a reservation because the reservations are very difficult to get, frankly, even in these economic times here in 2011. Um, but there's lots of great restaurants. You can, you can get on and read some reviews and decide where you want to go. Um, so if you plan a tour in the afternoon and a tour in the morning, um, and just hang out and just go around, you'll, you'll have a great time in Napa Valley. Um, my personal favorite geographic area is the Silver, along Silverado Trail, the Stag's Leap Wine District. There's Stag's Leap Wine Cellars. Um, there's just a, a plethora of wineries over there that I really enjoy. I enjoy that style. So next time you go to Napa, have a great time. Um, one other little tip you might do if you have a wine vendor you're dealing with, have them set a tour up for you. Ask them, would you please set me up a tour? Um, they'll want to know how many people in your group, your name, where you're staying, and your cell phone number. And a most, most wine vendors, a reputable, a reputable wine vendor will do that for you. Matter of fact, if you, ever want, if you want me to do it, just give me a, uh, send me an email at tom at forwinelovers.com and I'll be happy to set something up for you. That's it for today. Have a great uh, glass of wine tonight, and I'll see you next time. I'm Tom from the International House of Wine and Cheese and forwinelovers.com. Thanks.